Hello everyone. The Lord be with you and also with you. I want to read all three readings today because they all have so much to say to us. And it reminds me that people can preach and teach all they want. And yes, it is good to listen and to learn. But in some ways, it's so much better to go straight to God's word, his inspired word in the Bible. And so to start with, here is the psalm. It's Psalm 19, the psalm that starts with praising God's glory. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. But having declared his glory, David goes on to speak of the perfection of God's law. And the verses that I'm going to read now, verses 7 to 11, show how this law nurtures and sustains us. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. They are much more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. By them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The New Testament reading is from James, it's chapter 3, and I'm going to read verses 13 to 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom, but if you harbour bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you found, find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now that reading from James continues the idea of the perfection of God's law. And this time it's about how we live it out. If we live by earthly standards, pursuing worldly status and ambition, it will lead to envy and selfishness. The wisdom that comes from living humbly according to God's law leads to that nurture and sustenance that the psalm spoke about, good fruit. And now the gospel reading. This teaches us how important it is to live close to Jesus, that in fact we do take God's law into our hearts. And so listen to the good news proclaimed in Mark's gospel, chapter 9, reading verses 14 to 29. Glory to our Saviour. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? he asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. 
Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Oh, unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered, it has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, Everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the evil spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, Why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, This kind can come out only by prayer. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. It seems that the basic problem here for the disciples is that they are trying to do things in their own strength. And Jesus has to remind them that their power comes from the Lord and that they should realize that they are only channels of God's power and they need to pray. That reminds us that Jesus spent many hours in prayer with his Father. Whatever it is that we are facing, whatever we are trying to do, we too should take it to the Lord in prayer. Verse 24 is one that resonates with many of us. I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. And Jesus healed the boy. He meets us where we are. But the closer we live to him, the more time we spend with him in prayer, the more our faith will grow and deepen, and the more obedient to God we will become. Obedience to God is a proof of our love for him. It demonstrates our commitment and faithfulness to him. And obedience opens God's door of blessings on our lives. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today in prayer. We learn from your word what you require from us, Lord. And we remember the words of your prophet, Micah. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. We pray that with the help of your Holy Spirit, we may have the strength to live according to your will. May we understand that your law is not legalism, but is the law of love. May we demonstrate this law in action each day in our daily lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we pray the prayer for South, South Africa, we realize that if we all live according to God's law, this prayer would indeed come to fruition. And so we pray that our lives will show others your will in action, that they too may come to follow you. 
Amen. Lord, grant us a vision for our land, a land of justice where none shall prey on others, a land of plenty where poverty shall cease to fester, a land of work where all can be employed, a land of openness where all are accepted as equal, a land of healing where hatred and racial prejudice exist no more, a land of peace which is free of violence, and bring this vision to fruition. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God bless Africa, guide our leaders, guard our children, and give us peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, all whom you love and for whom you pray, now and always. Amen. So, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love to you all. Keep yourself safe and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye. Sweet.